What's up guys, welcome back to another video and today we are talking about a powerful tool that can help your beat mixes stand out. So last week we spoke about some common beat mixing mistakes, but today I want to cover one of my favorite tools that I use to take my beat mixes to the next level. The best part about this tool is that it's one that you already have available if you own a DAW, and the tool in question today is automation. Now I'll be honest, I can't tell you how many times I heard about automation in my early days, and it just never seemed important enough, or maybe just fun enough, if I'm being honest, for me to give it any attention. And it wasn't until much, much later that I started to realize what it could do, or rather what I could do with it. Essentially what automation does is it allows you to trigger certain effects or parameters at specific points in your mix, which is exactly what allows for an engaging beat mix. Now what you decide to do with automation is subjective and completely up to you, but today I'm gonna be showing you guys what I consider to be some of the most common uses of automation so let's jump right in. Okay, so jumping into Studio One, this is a beat that I made a couple months back. It's called Bad Decisions. And I picked this beat because it has a pretty interesting section here in the middle of the verse where I dropped out some of the drums and I brought in a, like a more synthy bass. So I thought it'd be perfect to showcase some of these examples. And essentially that section sounds like this. Okay, so the first and what I would consider to be the most common use of automation is to create that underwater effect. Now I'm sure you guys have heard about this, but this is when you take an EQ or really just any filter plugin and you cut out some of the highs of either your entire beat or just some sounds to give it that muffled underwater feel. Now as cool as that effect is, you definitely don't want it on the entire beat. So to fix that, we use automation. Now the easiest way that I found to do this is to add an EQ to my beat bus. Now I've talked about my beat bus before in other videos where I've broken down my mixing template but essentially this is where everything in the mix gets routed to so every single sound every single instrument drum it gets routed eventually to the beat bus so anything that i add here affects the entire mix so from here just open up your favorite eq and for me that's just a stock plugin from studio one and essentially let's go ahead and play that section and set the parameters for this eq so let's go ahead and do that here That sounds about right. Now, once you've cut out some of the highs and you're comfortable with your decision, the next thing we have to do is automate it. Now in Studio One, it's super simple. All you have to do is go over to the bypass button, which is next to the power button, and then right click it and hit edit automation bypass. Essentially, this created a track in our sequencer that corresponds to the one in our mixing console, the beat bus. So from here, all we have to do is set some start and end points. So the section that I wanna add this to is only between 21 and 25, that's when the drums drop out and I bring in that synthy bass. So I'm gonna set some start and end points. Let's go ahead and do that here, starting at 21. Let me bring up the EQ too so you guys can see it. Let me pin it. So starting at 21 and then ending at 25. So let me set the end point there. And essentially, if we're outside of that range, it's bypassed. And if we're in that range, it's turned on. So let's see how that sounds. Eventually, it'll cut off here. Now, the other thing you could do is you could also automate this band so it gradually reduces or decreases that underwater effect over time. And again, all you simply have to do is go over to that band, so this one here, and we're going to right click it and then hit edit automation. From here, we're going to go back to that beat bus track in our sequencer, and I'm going to set a start point here because I want that to be exactly how we set it in the EQ. And then I'm gonna set another one at the very end, but I'm gonna raise this. So eventually it cuts out and it should sound something like this. Slowly reducing it. Now in Studio One, as you can see, once you activate this 
kind of um, high cut shelf, it doesn't really go away completely. So what you could also do is add another automation just to kind of clear that out completely. So right here in this button, this is the on and off button for, for the band, right click, edit automation, and essentially you're just gonna make it turn off at that point. So, and then boom, off. So again, this is what it sounds like. Gradually reducing. And then it should cut off here. And there it is. Another popular use of automation is for delay. Maybe you have a specific sound that you want to add a delay to, but you only want it active at certain points in your mix. Again, this is where automation can help. Okay, so in that same section that we just kind of altered, there is, I believe, only the snare, accent snare, and the clap happening along with the close hats. So let's take a listen again. So I want to add some sort of delay to the clap. The clap by itself sounds like this. So let's go ahead and do that now. So to do that, I'm actually only going to the clap bus this time, not the entire beat mix, because I only want to affect the clap, not the entire thing. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to bring in one of my favorite delays, and that's Echo Boy here. So I'm going to go ahead and set it to a quarter note delay, bring the mix down a little bit, bring the feedback up, cut some of the lows. And of course, this is already synced to the BPM for the session. So let's go ahead and see how that sounds. Now that sounds good, but again, I only want it in this specific section. So again, we're gonna go over to our plugin. I'm gonna go over to the, the uh, bypass button, right click it, edit bypass. From here, let's go ahead and again, set our start and end points. So 21 is where we're starting. Let's go ahead and set that up here. And then 25 is where we're ending. So again, let's set that up. And now we should get something like this. Finally, one of my favorite ways to use automation is with volume. Now, oftentimes in a mix, there'll be situations where you will want a specific sound to be at a certain volume in one point of the mix and then at a different volume in another segment. One of my favorite ways to incorporate this concept and again, to take my beat mixes to the next level is to automate the volume of my hooks or choruses. Now, I can't explain the psychology of this because I'm not trained in this field, but for some weird reasons, humans, we tend to think that whatever is louder sounds better. So basically what I do is I take every hook or chorus in my beat mix and raise that entire section up by one decibel. This sounds insignificant, but I've done A-B tests where I've shown people two versions of the same beat mix where the only difference is that with one, I've raised the hooks by one decibel and eight to nine times out of 10, they always pick the one with the louder hooks. Now I didn't invent this concept and I'm definitely not the first to talk about it. I actually learned it from Joe Gilder over at homestudiocorner.com and in his scenario, he used it with songs, but I got to thinking, what if I can use the same concept with beat mixes. Now there's a couple ways to do this. You can go the long way and automate every single fader in your beat mix to be raised by one decibel and only be active whenever the hooks come in, or you can use something like a VCA fader. I've talked about VCA faders before. I use them a lot in my beat mixes, but essentially you can send different faders to one VCA fader and then control them all through that one single fader. So for example, this one here is called Beat Faders, and as you can guess, it controls every single fader in my mix. So much like we've been doing before, I'm gonna go over to this fader and I'm gonna right click and then hit Edit Automation for Volume. So again, we get that automation line on a track in our timeline. So I'm gonna go ahead and set our start and end markers. So I'm gonna set one here and then one here for our end marker. And I'm gonna raise this entire thing by one decibel. So like right there. And let's see how that sounds.
Now again, I don't know if this is some sort of placebo effect that only works on some people, but in any case, try it out and see how it works for you. Now, of course, these were only three small examples of how to use automation to take your beat mixes to the next level, but there are many, many more, so I encourage you to experiment. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about beat mixing in a step-by-step -step style, then I have something for you. In a few weeks, I'll be releasing my brand new course titled Better Beat Mixes that walks you through my entire beat mixing process and shows you how to get great beat mixes that can be uploaded to any platform. This course for me is what I wish I had in the beginning of my journey when I wasn't as comfortable with beat mixing and specifically for someone like me who had plenty of questions but not enough people to answer them. So to give you guys a little taste, I've prepared an exclusive sneak peek for you guys of one of the chapters in the course to give you some idea of what to expect. All you have to do to get that exclusive sneak peek along with some extra free stuff is hit the first link in the description. But that's it for me guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something today. I hope you at least consider using automation moving forward to take your beat mixes to another level. But as always, like this video if you liked it, subscribe if you're not already, but I will see you guys on the next one.